journey of enlightenment. I am your host, Dr. Roger Kapoor. Our program, as usual, focuses on Vedic culture, Vedic literature, and Vedic philosophy. When we speak about Vedic philosophy, Vedic culture, Vedic knowledge, we know that uh, these texts, this knowledge, was revealed to us thousands and thousands of years ago. More so, the knowledge of the Vedas has no beginning and no end. Many of us may wonder, is there still relevance in this knowledge today? Is it applicable to the year 2022 and beyond? And the answer to that is yes. My program will focus on the application of that knowledge in a very modern context. How it applies to ourselves as human beings, how it applies to, to our environment, to our family life, how it applies to the workplace, and how it applies even to the advancement of our world. We will show during our program the relevance of our ancient knowledge to everyday life. There was a story that I came about when I was a little child, and that story fascinated me. Most of us would be familiar with the story of uh, the Ramayana, one of the most beautiful epics ever written. The story of the Ramayana, as we all know, is a story of uh, Sri Ram and his quest to rescue Sita, his wife, from the clutches of Ravan in the kingdom of Lanka. In so doing, Lord Ram was able to create an army of followers, devotees, who believed in his cause. One of those great devotees is Hanumanji. Even to this day, there are murtis of Hanuman wherever you go. And I'm also proud to say that in Trinidad and Tobago, we have the largest Hanuman murti in the Western Hemisphere. But there are other heroes as well. In one particular instance, when they were getting ready to build a bridge to cross the ocean into Lanka, all the monkeys were there ready to do their part in constructing this bridge. They wrote the name of Sri Ram on each slab and they would place this on the ocean and it floated. That was a strategy in order to build a bridge. What is even more interesting but less told is that not only were the monkeys at labor, there were others involved as well. And one in particular was a squirrel. The squirrel, being small in nature, was unable to lift the heavy boulders, the rocks, and place them on the water. So the little squirrel took his time he picked up little pebbles and he threw the pebbles into the water. One particular monkey saw what the squirrel was doing and he laughed. And he scoffed at the squirrel and, and he said to him, Does this even make sense to you? Of course I am paraphrasing. We are all lifting heavy boulders and we're placing on the water in order to build a bridge. How could your little pebble be of any use? Sri Ram took the squirrel and uh, patted him on his back. Because the value of the squirrel was not in lifting the big rocks, but each little pebble filled the gaps in between the large boulders to create that bridge. Indeed, 
we all have a role to play. We might be big, we might be small, we might be rich, we may not be so rich. But the greatest mistake any one of us can ever make is to believe that we have no role to play. The biggest mistake anyone can make is to believe that we have no contribution to make. It is an error to think less of ourselves. That scripture written thousands of years ago by Valmiki and written almost 500 years ago by Tulsidas still has relevance for us today. When I was a child, I enjoyed looking at Winnie the Pooh in the Hundred Acre Woods. I was fascinated by all the characters. And what amazed me most about Winnie the Pooh is that each character had a unique feature, a unique personality to them. Winnie the Pooh seemed to be always calm and always pleasant. Tigger, on the other hand, was very hyper and exceedingly happy. Eeyore, I was never sure if he was depressed or just very slow. And Piglet was always scared of almost everything. That story, Winnie the Pooh, is not originally a Disney story. It was a British story written in, in England. And it was written in 1926 by an individual called Alan Milne. In the story of the Hundred Acre Wood, Winnie the Pooh once said, the things that make me different are the things that make me. What does he mean? Winnie the Pooh in that quote was actually saying the fact that I am different is what makes me special. Winnie enjoyed the differences in all the characters in the Hundred Acre Wood. Those differences is what made the Hundred Acre Wood so special. In the case of the squirrel, in the Ramayana, it was that difference that made a huge difference in the building of that bridge. Despite the fact that the squirrel was not as big as the other monkeys, not as strong as the other monkeys, but the squirrel saw value in the very so-called little things that he did that was not actually little. But it was important. It played a big role in building that bridge. Sri Ram took that squirrel and patted him on his back. Many people in South India today actually believe that there is still a mark in the back of uh, the squirrels in South India that depict that stroke from the hand of Sri Ram. We live in a world where being different is not necessarily celebrated all the time. In fact, it is usually frowned on in some places and in some context. When we look at our high school, one of the reasons that we suffer from the issue of bullying is because someone is perceived to be different. So they are mocked. They are taken advantage of. Even in the workplace, sometimes there's someone who might seem to be a bit different might be called odd, might be bullied, might be ill-treated because of that perceived difference. then should we be like everyone else? If we follow mainstream media, 
we will see so many advertisements all encouraging us to conform to a particular likeness such as be like and they will call the name of a particular celebrity if we are to look in modern day fashion styles we should wear this particular brand we should carry this particular uh, wallet or purse or shoes or wear a particular type of sunglasses because uh, it is an attempt for us to feel the need to fit in there is no pressure to fit in to anything because there is beauty in diversity there is great beauty in just being unique I know of a particular case where a young girl entered into high school. In order for her to feel that she was part of a group, the girl did everything that her friends did. She tried to dress like the popular girls, to speak like the popular girls, including changing her accent. She tried to hang out with the popular girls. She needed to fit in. Time after time, this girl lost her own identity. She lost that sense of uh, who she was. The girl then graduated and entered into university life. But she had already conditioned her mind to think in a particular way, to behave in a particular way that was appeasing to everyone else. She continued losing her identity. She dressed as, uh, it, as others expected of her. She went to places that she believed others would want her to be. She engaged in certain lifestyles just to fit in with the crowd. In this case, one might say, well, she is very happy doing what she's doing. But it was not that case with her. She was actually very sad, very miserable, because she was going against her own core belief. She was contradicting her own value system. It took a while for this girl to realize that she was not living her life. She was living everyone else's life. She was living everyone else's expectation. And she was not appreciating her uniqueness. After that realization, she was able to come to terms with the fact that she is unique. And in that uniqueness, there was no need whatsoever to try and fit in into anybody else's world. But just enjoy being yourself. And time after time, she learned how to be herself. That sadness that she carried inside turned into happiness. And that outward appearance of happiness to please the world became true happiness. She became a person that was uh, joyful and peaceful, both within and outside, because she learned to appreciate herself. We should not ever go about life trying our best to meet the expectations of the world because when would it end? If we ask one million people what do they expect of us, we may probably get one million different answers. When would it stop? It stops when we are confident in ourselves 
to define ourselves, to appreciate our uniqueness, to love ourselves. When we are able to do so, then we are able to identify what our strengths are, what our contribution could be, and where's the best place for us to use this. The story of the Ramayana resonated with me for many years. The squirrel may not have been as strong as the monkeys or the bears or as big as an elephant or any of the other animals in the forest. The squirrel knew his size, he knew his strength, and he definitely knew what his contribution could be. Without hesitation, he made his contribution. And because of that contribution, Sri Ram himself recognized the effort of the squirrel. We go about life making our contribution. Need not be big in the eyes of the world, but it might be big for us. How about we live our lives today? Appreciating our uniqueness, appreciating what we have to offer, and do it with joy, do it with love, do it with a heart of peace, knowing that whatever it is that we do, we have made a contribution to this world. Perhaps it can be as simple as just uh, picking up some garbage that we saw left in the beach. It doesn't matter who left it there. It is still our land, our world. Perhaps it might be to give someone a seat on a bus or on a train who needs it. Perhaps it might be something as simple as wishing someone a beautiful day. We can all make our contribution. Do not judge the size. Just judge the value. Because each one of us has a value to offer. Thank you very much for joining me on this program, Journey of Enlightenment. Please tell your friends, share it on Facebook and other social media platforms that this message of Journey of Enlightenment can be spread. Looking forward to joining you as we journey to enlightenment. Thank you very much. Daniel.